Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Windows Business Weekly. And today I'm going to be talking about Microsoft's Ignite conference and about what's happening with Windows and Active Directory. So stay tuned. So probably you're aware that Microsoft held its annual Ignite conference this week and there's been a lot of news about various different things, but Windows and Active Directory haven't featured very much in that news. So today I want to talk a little bit about the things that are happening and the announcements that were made connected to those two technologies. So the first thing is that Performance Monitor, which is a tool that's been knocking around in Windows since, I think, something around 1993, has been reimagined by Microsoft as part of the Windows Admin Center. Now, if you're not familiar with Windows Admin Center, or WAC as it's sometimes abbreviated to, this is a relatively new management tool that is based on a web interface, And it's for managing Windows Server, uh, specifically, of course, Server Core, because that doesn't have its own GUI, and also for managing hybrid and hyper-converged environments. So, for instance, you can use it to also manage parts of Azure and your Windows Server on-premises devices together at the same time. Now... The Windows Admin Center is something that you can download and there are different ways that you can install it. You can either install it as a gateway on a server or on a Windows 10 device, or you can use it to directly access devices without actually installing it on a server. The main advantage it has over the traditional Microsoft management consoles is that it uses HTTP or HTTPS, so it's firewall friendly. It doesn't use the remote procedure calls that the old management consoles use. And of course, it's more user friendly and it's been designed to Uh, eventually, I suppose, replace those management consoles, although they are still bundled in Windows Server 2019. Uh, But at some point, I suppose, we will see those eventually disappear. But they're going to remain there for a long time, if only for the sake of backwards compatibility. So back to Performance Monitor. So Performance Monitor is now in preview as part of Windows Admin Center. So I think the latest version is 19.10, which you can download now for free from Microsoft's website. And if you scroll down the list of options for server management, Performance Monitor is now one of those. So basically, you've got all the uh, features that you had as part of the Performance Monitor tool that's built into Windows Server. So you can add counters, um, and you can also, in this uh, new version, you can create your own workspaces. So you can have different reports and different graphs displayed for different uh, monitoring scenarios. You can have one or more workspaces, for instance. It supports dark mode. It has a modern look and feel. And it's just a very nice addition to Windows Admin Center. Uh, And as I said, uh, Microsoft is hoping to replace that archaic performance monitor tool with this. Uh, So that's now in preview. Go and have a look. What else? So I'm going to talk about Azure Active Directory because, as you know, this is where Microsoft is investing most of its efforts into security and identity management. That's not to say that Windows Server Active Directory isn't important. Most of the new features are being added to the cloud side, of course, because that's what eventually Microsoft wants you to do, uh, or ultimately, I should say. They want you, of course, to subscribe to the cloud service uh, and they get their pennies that way. So what's new? Well, the Azure AD uh, service has supported FIDO, so F-I-D-O, security keys for passwordless logon for cloud-only users uh, in preview now for a good few months. I think it it went into public preview uh, sometime earlier this year. Now, that's all very well and good, but of course, lots of large enterprises have hybrid environments where they're using on-premise Active Directory and the cloud Azure Active Directory. Uh, And unfortunately, 
the uh, passwordless uh, logon with the FIDO security keys wasn't supported up until this point in that scenario. Well, Microsoft announced this week at Ignite that that is now supported and that that will go into public preview sometime early in 2020. Uh, so enterprises have that to look forward to. So um, if you know, of course, Microsoft is investing heavily in passwordless logon uh, in things like Windows Hello and Windows Hello for Business uh, to eventually do away with passwords so that instead you will either use a security key or a biometric gesture like your fingerprint or face recognition or even a pin. Uh, as far as Microsoft is concerned, anything is better than a password. So that was also announced this week. Now, you know that I've talked uh, on this uh, webinar about uh, the new Chromium-based Edge browser quite a bit. Uh, of course, you know, most of us spend a lot of our time in the browser, so it's a really important tool. And Microsoft announced this week that their new Chromium based Edge browser will debut in January 2020. Uh, I think the date was the 15th, uh, if, to, if to give you an exact date. Um, so this is going to debut initially on Windows 10, 7, 8 uh, and Mac OS, but uh, Microsoft is also planning a version for Linux, but that won't come in January, that will come at some point probably next year as well. So, of course, you know all about this new browser, I hope, already. I've already discussed it on Windows Business Weekly quite a bit. I did a whole uh, episode dedicated to collections a few weeks ago. Uh, what else can I say about it? Well, of course, because it's based on Chromium, it should be very compatible. You shouldn't do, need to do very much testing uh, with sites if they work in Chrome. Uh, if they work in Firefox, then they should probably work in the new Chromium-based Edge as well. But nevertheless, Microsoft has extended its Fast Track program and its App Assure program so that if you're a customer migrating to the cloud or you're a customer that wants to test application compatibility, then Microsoft is adding the new Edge to those two programs. So if you do, by any chance, have an issue with a legacy web application, then you can turn to Microsoft and look for support and they will help you to get it working in the new edge. But hopefully there shouldn't be many compatibility issues along those lines. Uh, it has Internet Explorer mode, so you can create an enterprise list of sites that should open or are only really compatible with Internet Explorer and they will open up in the new edge in a tab in edge, but they will use Internet Explorer's rendering engine. So this saves users from having to manage two browsers and to understand, well, do I, new, do I use the new Edge browser or do I uh, use the old Internet Explorer for this particular app? You can make all of that just happen and use that uh, legacy rendering engine in a tab. Uh, that's not something that users can uh, decide for themselves. You have to create a group policy in an enterprise site list and define exactly which sites will use the IE rendering engine in a tab in the Edge browser. Of course, because of the security implications and compatibility issues, Microsoft doesn't really want users just deciding, oh, I want to run that in Edge, in, in, uh, but in an, uh, using the IE rendering engine, uh, something that you have to define as an organization. What else did Microsoft announce this week connected to Edge? Uh, there will be, uh, of course, the integration with Microsoft Search in Bing. So this is the search where you're able to search the company intranet and get information within the browser window using natural uh, language. They also announced that there are going to be for Office, sorry, for Microsoft 365 customers, uh, over 100 different connectors uh, that will connect things like Salesforce, Box, uh, ServiceNow to the uh, Microsoft Graph, I think it is. Uh, let me just check that information. Uh, yep, so you'll be able to integrate other systems into Microsoft's upcoming uh, search technology. 
So I think that's it for Microsoft uh, Edge. Uh, so that was announced, of course, at Ignite this week that we'll be able to, to download the uh, generally available released version in January. Uh, I should also add that the beta that's just been released, as far as I understand, that is likely to be the last beta until it reaches general availability. Of course, you've still got the uh, dev and the canary channels as well. Uh, improve security for Active Directory, well, Azure Active Directory to uh, be more precise. So Microsoft is enabling uh, Azure multi-factor authentication for all users starting at the end of this month, uh, as long as you're using the Microsoft Authenticator app, so that, that with that uh, authentication method. Uh, and that will be enabled by default for all new Azure Microsoft 365, Office 365 tenants. Uh, if you have an existing tenant, it won't just kind of be switched on. That's something you, you would have to enable. But in all new tenants, it will be enabled by default. Uh, that's starting, the rollout for that is starting at the end of this month, but the rollout may, of course, take two or three months to actually complete. There have been some improvements to identity protection and conditional access. Uh, so uh, identity protection identity protection has been updated with new and enhanced signals and they've improved the APIs so you get better integration with your uh, on-premise systems if you're you know, a security operations center uh, and there's also a new interface. Uh, the big thing about conditional access now is that it gets a report mode so basically, rather than having to enable it and risking that users might not get access because of a particular access policy that you've implemented, you can now enable it in report mode and see what would happen if you enabled it, if that makes sense. So you can actually test your conditional access policies without worrying about the effect that they might have on users in terms of them being able to access resources. You can now test that by enabling report mode. Uh, also, there's a new conditional access workbook for users of Azure Monitor. Uh, so you can also see the impact of your conditional access policies there. Microsoft is adding a new feature to uh, Azure AD Connect called Cloud Provisioning. And this will enable you to install a lightweight agent so that you can connect AD for us wherever they're located and basically upload all of that user identity information to a single uh, Active Directory Azure tenant. Uh, so that's coming now, well, soon to uh, Azure AD Connect. Uh, what else have we got here? Entitlement uh, management is now generally available. So this has been something that's been in public preview, not something that I've looked at, to be honest. But basically, it's designed to help organizations manage access to groups, apps, and share SharePoint online sites, whether they're internal users or external users. And it allows organizations to create uh, access packages so that users can then create a uh, sort of request access through those packages. And it saves, you know, an individual IT uh, person in your organization can't understand, of course, all the access that a particular person or uh, a role should have access to. So these access packages uh, allow that process to happen more automatically um, and just ease that, that situation for both IT and for users requesting access. Maybe that's something that I will cover on Windows Business Weekly in more detail. There's inbound user provisioning uh, to uh, Azure AD again from SAP Success Factor. So it's an HR management system. So if you're using that, you can now uh, automatically uh, deploy your users in Azure AD from that system. Okay, and finally, uh, today, because I, I don't want to go on for too much longer, uh, I think it's worth talking about System Center Configuration Manager and Intune. So while this is not strictly Windows, of course, these systems are used to manage Windows by lots of organizations. So basically, these two systems are now being converged into uh, under one umbrella, if you like, uh, called Microsoft Endpoint Management. And... Basically, this new product, so MEM, it's going to be called, combines these two uh, management systems. 
Um, and you will still be able to use Configuration Manager on its own. You will still be able to use Intune on its own or co-manage systems using both Configuration Manager uh, or Intune. But it's just basically to simplify the uh, branding, if you like, around all of these products for endpoint management. So there will be basically uh, bringing all this data from Config Manager into Intune. Uh, so you, there will be like a, a convergence of all, of all of that data. There will be new uh, actions uh, for seamless end-to-end -end management of your endpoints. Microsoft is also bringing in device, the Device Management Admin Center, DMAC, and also the Desktop Analytics Service. So this is the service that you would use if you're upgrading from Windows 7 to Windows 10, or if you're upgrading to a new Windows 10 uh, feature update. And it's used basically to test uh, compatibility, whether your systems are ready, whether the software is ready, whether there are any driver issues, and it's designed to help you automate that process and help everything go much smoother. Now, one thing about licensing. So if you have licenses for Config Manager, you will now be able to use Intune for free as long as you're managing Windows devices. If you're using Intune to manage non-Windows devices, you will still have to purchase a relevant license. So that's also another interesting change with what's happening around the endpoint management space. Okay, so Windows and Active Directory haven't really hit the headlines much in terms of all the press MS Ignite coverage, but there is stuff happening, and you can obviously have a look uh, at Microsoft's own website, there's lots of sessions there that you'd be able to uh, watch after the fact. Uh, lots of uh, interesting uh, things that you can learn about Windows and all of the other technologies, of course. There's lots of Azure announcements, Office announcements, uh, and other things going on at Ignite. Uh, but that's it for me from this week. Uh, I hope there was some useful information for you, and uh, I'll catch you next week on Windows Business Weekly.